Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a big video lined up for you. As you can see on the side, we have your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Number one, Cardano lists on Coinbase Pro. What does this mean for the ADA price? We're gonna take a look at that and quickly review what we looked at yesterday on the charts. We're gonna look at Polkadot and the changing narrative. The NFT mania craze, is this coming to an end? Bitcoin set to surge with stimulus checks. Have a quick recap of that as well. Bitcoin ETFs in the US. TBK partnership, a big one that we've been looking at on the channel as a small cap crypto that has huge 100x potential. And last days for the discount, which I'll get to in the end of the video. So if you love the sound of that, let me know. Hit that like button down below. Comment down below your thoughts on Cardano and what's happening here. I know you will do that regardless. Like the video if you find some value from it. Let's see if we can get the video to 3,000 likes. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. And of course, thank you guys very much for getting us to 90,000 subscribers, nearly at the 100,000. Let's go for that. So let's start with the first thing first, and that being Cardano. Now I've got a few seconds here that I want to play. Cardano, BTC, something that we look at often, it has continued to fall on a daily chart. It's had a small reaction, a small rally, which is exactly what we we're expecting after so many days down. It doesn't take a genius to spot that. I'm definitely no genius. You guys have mentioned that in the comments before. Uh, Cardano, Ethereum, again, we're just having a little bit of a softening here, which is a good sign. So maybe it could be time to start to DCA back into Cardano. So that's what we were looking at yesterday. Could be a good time. Now the news what came out after this, so that was probably good timing to start. Yes, the price did shoot up to the dollar twenty, but this is just trading. Now, if you have a follower of the channel, you know that Cardano isn't something that I am holding like Bitcoin and Ethereum long term like those two. Some of you have a different view. You believe that's the coin to be holding long term. And if you bought in at March last year, definitely you won the battle there. But if you're getting in later, different story. Probably still has bigger gains, but look, this is trading, there are no guarantees. What I'm looking at here is on the charts, it was looking like it was a potential turn in the market. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to be sustained and we'll look at that in the chart in just a moment. But, you know, yesterday, not a bad time. That's all I'm looking at here. Nothing too over the top. That looks pretty good. Let's move on. Have a look at the news piece itself. Cardano ADA launching on Coinbase. Basically, just the date here. Uh, starting today, Tuesday, March 16, transfer ADA into your Coinbase Pro account ahead of trading. So then it's got here uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Thursday, March 18, if liquidity conditions are met. So that's when the trading begins and then they roll it out in stages as it is further down. They have uh, ADA, USD, BTC, Euro and British Pound and then they roll it out in stages. Uh, basically post only, limit only and then full trading. So just keep that in mind. So another quick look, coin market cap, we're always quick here, $1.7 trillion, Bitcoin, $1 trillion, we're holding that level, Ethereum, $200 billion, and then Cardano sitting at nearly $39 billion. It did shoot up to around that $1.30 mark, and now we've just eased off a little bit to around $1.20. Still looks reasonably good. We did break out of that consolidation at the lows, around that $0.97 cents to $1.05. Uh, looking at Google Trends, so trends coming up and what we have seen happen already. NFT is just starting to decline. So reminder here, I've got it on worldwide, not just the US and past 90 days. So you can bring this uh, to a shorter time frame. We can bring it down to seven days, which is also handy just to see the short term moves. But overall, I really want to see the 90 days just to give us a bit more of an idea. So why I'm looking at seven days here is because Cardano has peaked just those few hours ago and it is really cooling off. Maybe we'll get another spike uh, later today when more of the news catches up to the rest of the world, maybe to Europe and stuff like that. But I think the majority of it could have happened. Nothing definite yet, but that's a pretty decent spike and now we're starting to fall away in terms of the search trends and the price, which we'll, like I said, have a look at. Now here, uh, NFTs still on the rise in the seven days, but we have had some cooling since uh, the last 24 hours. Ethereum also just starting to cool and Litecoin, not much going on there. I have Litecoin because it's one that continues to come up and we're just not seeing the movement that we were expecting. Crypto Fear and Greed, 71. Uh, yesterday, 71. Last week, 68. So 
we're hovering around those prices, which is nice, just to give us some sort of consolidation, hopefully for a little bit longer, like you know, we've been talking about on the Bitcoin and the Ethereum chart. We want to see the market continue to consolidate at reasonably strong levels, as opposed to it just continue to move up. So we want to build foundations. That's all that is about. If you don't understand that, let us know in the comments. Someone will explain it. We'll get back to you, explain how these bull markets should move on if we're going to be sustainable. Um, extreme greed was last month. So it's good that we've sort of moved down from that now. Quick cap uh, look at coin market cow. You guys are probably familiar with this. Now I'm just looking at these as significant, hot, trending what's on this. There's a few people that watch this, this uh, website. So it's good to note as well, just more around the market sentiment, which if you notice, that's what I put at the beginning of the video. It's a lot to do with the market sentiment, what's going on. Uh, we've got listings for Cardano listings for Yearn Finance and EOS. So they're the big players right there. Now I've got this news piece first, just before the chart, which is coming up next. Nigerians turn to stable coins for protection against inflation. Now I'm not going to spend long on this. The only point I'm bringing up here is that Cardano is supposed to be going into Africa. You know, those sort of um, conferences going on there with Charles Hoskinson, CEO, going over. They want to bring Cardano to Africa. Um, but here I see they're looking to stable coins and potentially we'll get some stable coins that list onto Cardano. So that could be a good sign as well. Now, a couple of highlights I have here, um, untapped market. In Africa, around 350 million adults do not have bank accounts, according to the World Bank. So hopefully we can uh, believe in those figures. Globally, the unbanked are dispar disproportionately female and poor. Uh, they have saving circles. 2018, Africa, South Africa alone, 11 million people were part of traditional savings groups. They saved around 3 billion. So not huge, but of course, this is in a place where they have to do everything themselves, run all their own savings groups and build their own infrastructure and that sort of that sort of thing. They don't have what we have in our developed countries. So you could probably say it's not such a bad deal getting 3 billion together when you don't have a banking system to help you out with that. Um, so that's what I really wanted to have a look at there before we move on to the Cardano chart. We've seen it spike, break through some of these tops, which is great. You know, yesterday we were talking about it down here at a dollar, maybe a good time. Last time we checked it, we we're looking at a dollar twenty as a, an exit point, and so we're back to that point now. So sure, if you just held through that period, you're doing just as well as you were back there. No problems. This is investing. You just don't know, and everyone has a different investment strategy. So I do the same thing with Ethereum. It's up at 2000, drops to 1500. I don't care. I just hold it and continue to work with it. Other coins, I'm happy to sell off a little bit to see if I can get in a little bit cheaper later because they are smaller positions than my bigger holdings, which is my Ethereum and Bitcoin, which you can see on my Instagram. Uh, over there, we've got the retirement fund portfolio. Where are we going here? That's what we were talking about earlier on. What does this mean to the price? We want to see this move up again, or at least begin to push to another high and <clears throat> for the volume to come in. Now, if the volume doesn't come in, then we could possibly assume that the news has had its day, just like some sort of Elon Musk Dogecoin tweet where we see it pump and then fade away as the hope just fades again. So ideally for a positive uh, scenario, we want to see the price move up. What does that look like? Obviously move up here. If it can break these highs, that would be great. If it can close above this level, also great. And then continue to potentially just put in a higher swing top here. And that's fine. You know, if we came back and retested that level after this sort of swing, that is a healthy move up. I mean, if it shoots straight up, takes out the highs, then of course, you know, this thing is running like a hot bull again, and that's no problems at all. But if we continue, if we saw the market move up or at least start to fade from here, move up and then fade and fade again, that's probably not the sign we want to see after a Coinbase listing, which you'd know for yourself is touted as one of the, the biggest news events uh, an altcoin can get. So if you get a really big news event, which people put a lot of emphasis on, and it doesn't occur in the price, it doesn't translate over into the price to push that price up, then you could possibly say, you could possibly assume because that's what you have to do. We're only trading this black side over here. We don't know what's going to happen. We can only assume that a lot of that Coinbase hype has been priced in through this area. 
So that's why we're waiting for the move up, potential pullback or you know further up. That is the sort of thing we want to see. And then the price to con continue to move because that's gonna give us the strong uh, conviction of the Coinbase listing. All right, so last thing is if it falls, then we probably will could assume that the probabilities are in the favor of the price breaking through this low once again. So it's probably good not to chase the pump, just wait for a signal up here and move on from that point. So while we're here, let's have a quick look. Ethereum, it's also moved up against Ethereum. Bitcoin, also moved up against Bitcoin pretty substantially, so that's that's quite nice. Let's have a quick look at the uh, at the percentage here. So from that low to the current point, about 25%, or if we go to the top, about 33, 34%. So pretty good move overall. That's uh, Cardano. Let's take a look at the Polkadot news and the shifting narrative. So I assume, and I'm only just sort of forecasting things forward, maybe I'm looking too far ahead, but what I think is going to we, we'll start to see is more of these Polkadot articles. Polkadot bridges will connect the ecosystem with the external networks. And so I want to pay attention to this, especially with the, the Cardano hype, as uh, if we do get the news and the narrative begin to shift that uh, projects are moving from Ethereum to Polkadot, then that's obviously going to take some of the energy out of Cardano and it's going to shift to Polkadot. So that could be a better uh, buying opportunity and somewhere to dollar cost average in. Let's have a quick look at uh, DOT as well while we're here. So DOT on the on the USD chart, $36. And we saw a little drop down, decent volume on the push down. So that's that's a good sign as well, especially when it's falling and then it reverses again so that it can wipe out some of these weaker hands below here. Uh, maybe it was just an exit signal and you're happy to take your profits after being up 10X from the lows. Like that's also a pretty decent profit target as well. Uh, you know, it was back down at three to $4 now, getting closer to that $40 yet again. From this point on dot, uh, if that narrative does shift, then yes, I do think we could see this high get taken out. The next piece, Polkadot uh, integrations, another news piece. Basically, this is getting spread across multiple news outlets. We've got Cointelegraph. Uh, this one is with Crypto News Flash. So the, the narrative is continuing across multiple platforms. More eyes are going to see it. As a result of Polkadot's rise to prominence, projects that have embraced the concept of interoperability and joined the Polkadot ecosystem have seen a boost in their token prices over the past few months. So that narrative is then going to shift more projects to come across to Polkadot so that their token prices can increase and then that's going to increase Polkadot as well. And then it's all this whole big, happy, positive vibe moving towards Polkadot. And, uh, you can basically write the end of that story. It's not too hard to tell at that point, especially when you're looking at the price chart as well. After Polkadot, we're looking at some NFT news. So looking here, basically, I'm just looking at this as NFT has really, really hit the mainstream. That's probably no surprise to anyone by now. Ja Rule is now selling Fire Festival NFTs. What could go wrong? Reno's Link Marine Mayor is minting Burning Man NFT, sponsoring Hackathon, uh, viral Trump video getting NFT treatment. It's just NFTs across top stories with Decrypt, another good crypto news source. So NFTs in the major mainstream spotlight, that is generally the end of a, a trend. But you've got to stay with the trend. If the trend is up, and it's gonna continue running. It could run another week, two weeks, four weeks, we don't know, but this is kind of that scarier point uh, where I, personally, I would never be investing into these things with a huge ton of money, like just getting into this now. It's hit mainstream, you can see, Ja Rule, come on, what, what, what do these figures know about cryptocurrency or investing? It's, it's a hot trend, that's what they know about. That, that's what they market, that's their whole market, it's just, you know, they're, they're artists, they create stuff and then they sell it to the masses. So that's basically a sign for me looking back here. NFT mania craze coming to an end. Sure, that's an easy one, an easy one. Will the US government allow 40 billion stimulus checks to inflow to Bitcoin? Do they have a choice? <laughs> I mean, if the money's in your bank account and you're connected to your Coinbase or whatever other crypto exchange, can they really stop you? Basically from here, there's about 380 billion in direct bank transfers shall be coming to uh, Bitcoin and stocks out of that. So 380 billion is what the government is giving out to household incomes under 150 grand. 
uh, 10% of that, around 40 billion, they are suspecting will go through to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So this is from that server that we looked at the other day, but I just wanted to bring it up because of the dollar figures and how few individuals they surveyed. The team at Mizu surveyed nearly 235 individuals. So how much emphasis can we really, really put onto this? You let me know in the comments. Is this something that you would really play or put too much emphasis on as uh, 40 billion? They're really just going all out here saying 10% of all of that stimulus could be coming into Bitcoin and we only surveyed 235 individuals. And if it was 10% of those individuals, then that's only going to be 24 individuals. Think about it. You know, if we're reading this, the team at Mizu surveyed nearly 235 individuals and only 10% estimating for 40 billion. All right. A couple more pieces to get through Bitcoin ETF and TVK, a big one that we continue to follow here. Wall Street steps up crypto ETF push as SEC verdict unknown. So issuers across $5.9 trillion US ETF industry are racing to win approval for the first Bitcoin fund with one big hurdle standing in front of them, a regulator whose position right now is anyone's guest. Uh, guess. At least four firms now have live applications for an exchange traded fund tracking the largest cryptocurrency. Now, deciding whether this is going to happen this year seems like it should, especially with Canada getting three ETFs already, three Bitcoin ETFs. And then there's also other uh, basically products that they're putting together to replicate some sort of Bitcoin ETF, as we can see here. And now Grayscale is recru recruiting an entire ETF team. So you would have to guess all of this is entirely speculative, but you would think that they would allow a Bitcoin ETF and that could be some sort of mega uh, bullish news later in the cycle that could lead to some sort of last final peak for this institutional money to possibly sell into some craziness at the end of a peak. So if that sort of timing happens towards the end of the cycle and if we're looking towards the last quarter, uh, the third, late in the third quarter, maybe the last quarter, maybe the first quarter of 2022, and this sort of news lines up, then I would say that that could lead to some sort of big blow off top and uh, possibly not good news after that. But this is very highly speculative and we could still be six, nine, 12 months away from uh, that news lining up with it. If it comes earlier, then that's just going to be a bigger drive into the bull market, which is obviously my opinion. No one knows the date for sure. Only these regulators can tell us that. So we'll stay tuned for that as well. Now let's have a look at TVK. We've dropped to 95 cents. First time we looked at this, it was around, I think it was 65 to 70 cents. Got to 80 cents the other day when we were talking about it and we've had a peak out to about a dollar, dollar 10. So at 95 cents, still looking good. Uh, I love the look of this project. We've got a partnership over here with uh, Eternity. Eternity, yep. And basically this is in the NFT space. So if we are believing that the NFT space is beginning to cool off, but we haven't seen a massive spike in TVK, maybe we're gonna get a bit of a consolidation before it begins to move on again through the next stage of the bull market. So that could be a, a promising factor for the project and getting in early. So we're at around $87 million on the market cap, fully diluted, still 1 billion. So we've got to keep note of that. And like we've said in many videos before, uh, we want to be out before the big hands are allowed to release their tokens or that the market or that the, uh, the team dumps on the market. I don't know when that would be, why they would do it. I've got no idea about those things, but I do want to speak with the team. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully I can get uh, an interview with them and basically understand this in more detail rather than high speculation and looking at 18 days of chart history. But overall, it looks like a fairly good project that I would like to be more involved with and uh, especially in you know this, this building space of NFTs. So a quick look at the chart before we wrap up. And basically T TVK had a big shootout, high volume reversal, reasonably high volume again. And today we're just getting to push down. I think we're looking to test these levels and uh, potentially the lows here at 86. So ideally we want to see it consolidate around this 90 to a dollar, but I'm still not concerned as you can see here with the alerts. I wouldn't be concerned if we saw it at around 80 cents to a dollar consolidation. Anywhere down to that 68, 70 cent level is still pretty decent in my eyes, especially with our FIB levels. So you're familiar with it. This is what we look at, the FIB levels. 
looking good. Like I said, anywhere that region, hopefully we get something like that and we can move out again. Um, timing, another thing. We've got to wait and see. There's only 19 days or so of history on this chart. Finally for today, looking at all the charts, all the news, I wanted to bring up the Investor Accelerator as we've got a couple of weeks left at this current price. So if you are interested, I thought I'd make a public service announcement on this so that you guys can understand the details in full and know where to get the links from. The Investor Accelerator 12 month membership course update. So currently we've got over 200 members in our group already. So thank you very much to those guys who have signed up and are learning a lot in the course uh, and are actively engaged in the community. Everything is priced in Aussie dollars for you guys that are asking. It's not in US dollars, nothing like that. It's just all Aussie dollars. So, you know, sounds a little bit cheaper for everyone outside. Um, and fully structured, six and a half hour video lessons, and we're continuing to add to that. Course content can be applied to any market. So all around investing. Basically, we're looking at the swing chart stuff that I do on the charts every day. And this can be applied to stocks, futures, bonds, whatever it is you want to trade with a chart. Plus, we look at multiple asset classes, not just cryptocurrency. So we do look at property as well. So we're digging more into that as the course progresses and everyone becomes more familiar with charting, swing charting, etc. So that we can then rotate profits into other asset classes. 12 month access to exclusive Facebook community of investors, monthly live Q and A's with myself and an 11 year pro trader who I've brought on. It is my brother, Michael Pizzino. So if you see another Pizzino in there, it's my brother. He was the one that also was uh, teaching me about trading earlier in the day. Uh, so yeah, he's been trading 11 years uh, and yeah, just doing that full time with his property investing as well. So you get two for the price of one. Education support via questions, comments on videos and groups, more and more and more. There's just a lot of support in there. You guys who are in the group, if you're watching the video this end, let us know in the comments. Um, I've had great feedback from everyone and yeah, I've just been very thankful for that. New courses being added regularly to memberships, all included. So we're adding a new uh, swing chart and just some extra little courses to help uh, boost the education in there as well. And that's been the plan is to develop it out and make it even uh, more, I guess, full and well-rounded with more investing information. No locking contracts for you guys that are asking. All right, so price increase effective as of 1st of April, final 10% discount code for the next 120 members or until the 31st. So once the 120 is used up, that's it, or the 31st of March. Yeah, use the link in the description to sign up to the newsletter and you'll receive the discount code. So the link is down here, official link. Use that, don't be clicking other people's comments in the comment section. The link is in the description. Once this code's expired, there'll be no further discounts at uh, the current membership price. So click the link in the description, sign up today if you're interested to improve your trading and investing skills. 12 month membership, uh, it's at $7.99 at the moment and that will increase. I've seen plenty of other courses out there. This is by far has the most uh, detail and education support at what I've seen is the cheapest price, especially when you compare this to a US dollar price. Uh, with US dollar courses out there. So newsletter sign up, uh, get 10% discount. So basically about 80 bucks off, 719. And for the next 120 people, there is the course link all in the description. Have a quick look at that. That is the page that you should come up with. And then you just move down here. This is where you sign up. Just put your name, email address, hit submit on that. And then you'll get the email to uh, your email address with the discount code. This is what the site looks like and all of the course content. So like I said, over six and a half hours there, try to make it condensed, but also highly valuable of all the information, lots of technical analysis stuff, and also investing psychology. So heaps to go through there. I hope you guys love that and enjoy it. I'll wrap that one up there for you guys. Thank you very much for watching yet another video. Join me on Instagram, daily Q&A, retirement fund updates. I've got uh, more information about SMSFs and retirement funds coming up next week for you. So you guys who are asking about that, stay tuned. I'm very excited for that one. Uh, like the video if you found some value from it. 3,000 likes, come on, we can get there. Subscribe, nearly at 100,000 and I do have a special coming up for you then. I'm very excited for that one too. A lot's coming up, big times ahead. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.